Hey, listeners, before we get into today's episode, I just want to thank our sponsors. And we got two sponsors today, the first of which is Kind Bar. Kind is deeply committed to crafting food with with real recognizable ingredients, a disruptive notion that sparked the creation of a new healthy snacking category. Kind is unapologetic in their efforts to challenge the status quo to shift the food industry and empower the community and our listeners to make better informed choices about health. Kindness can be transformative force for good, and that is why we are teaming up with Kind to bring our listeners 10% or 15% off for military teachers, students, first responders, doctors, and nurses. Go to podgo.co slash kind. That's P-O-D-G-O dot C-O slash kind. Kind Bar, creating a kinder and healthier world, one act, one snack at a time. Our second sponsor for today is returning sponsor Pretentious Pickle. The Pretentious Pickle Company is located here in Plymouth, Massachusetts at 190 Water Street. And they have a wide variety of pickled uh, items, everything from pickled cucumbers to um, mushrooms, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, carrots, beets, anything that you can pickle, they pickle. And it's a delicious snack. And if you're in a pickle for what to get uh, your significant other for Valentine's Day, just go to Pretentious Pickle and they can sort that out for you. You can, again, find them at 190 Water Street here in Plymouth or find them on the web at pretentiouspickle.com. And now let's get into our show. Yeah, that might have been funny. Really good too. That might have been funny. I don't really know what the joke was. It was good. But we'll welcome later, back to the Bar Talk podcast. I am Andy, your host of. Uh, I'm Andy from Inebriart, Art, your host. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I feel like we haven't done this in a while. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Our man. Our listeners do. That's hurtful. And uh, that Thank laugh you. is Jordan from Speedwell Tavern. Love you, Andy. Yeah, and we as yeah, always sure. we got uh, Carl from. Where are we? New World Tavern. Hello, everybody. And that's where we're recording today. We're out of practice because um, we've been trying to schedule these and it keeps fucking snowing. Mm. But yeah, that's what happens in New England. Uh, so we figure we're going to do some some answer, some... Yeah, we got to get, like, can we put blinds up there? Like I, I do. I'm like, Jordan's so... Yeah, seconds. like, what, I, what, I what's should, going on I out there? I should not be facing the window. <laughs> it's way too... Um, claws and I'll settle down. So, uh, so we're gonna do Q and A because we haven't really done a whole Q and A episode in a while. Feels like, and we got some questions here, and everybody loves to hear me mispronounce names. So, uh, Ariel Poor. Ooh, that pretty easy. Yeah, that's a real name. Yeah. Ariel Poor. Yeah. Sounds like a pop sounds, star. Sounds dirty. It kind of sounds a little dirty. I was saying pop star being kind, but cool. Like stripper name, maybe. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else you're referring to, Jordan. Um, Me see, I, ju- I just have a question. Uh, I cannot, for the love of God, get my servers to pre bus tables. They have incentives involving cash. You have incentives to do your job? Yeah. Uh, I constantly ask them to check tables, and I get slammed with dirty glasses at the end of the night. Now, I'm not allowed to be the rude, blunt lady. I would love to be, but sometimes... Uh, Something's got to give. Any suggestions before I start throwing old lemons at them? Please help. Yes. Throw glasses at them. Yeah. And run around and say, let's go, let's go. <laughs> First of all, why, why are they, what do you mean pre-bust your table? You either bust your table, you don't bust that, your that's table. What I, that was right. going to be my question. Or like, does she mean Seating start, it while it's a dirty table? No. So I think what they mean by pre-busting is if you're sitting at a table and you're done with you know two or three glasses, and you're getting them another round. Take the glasses off. Yeah. Don't wait until it keeps on. That is gotta oh, be what yeah. she means. My that God. makes a lot of sense, and that would make sense. Well, why would you gets- do that? As as a customer, I'm actually handing things to the server. Yeah. Saying right. you know here you go. We're all set with this. You yeah. Know, here's well, the you're in the but biz, you're though. you're rude too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I can't I can't stand away. like if you bring me. If you bring me a new drink, which and, means, and you which, don't take the old drink away, which means mm, they're using crazy. clean glasses every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> it took me a second, yeah. actually. I don't know. Yeah, they should be pre-busting their tables. They should be busting their tables. Yeah, just say something. Why are if you are, yeah, it's like um, Bill Belichick, the do your job. Do your job. That sounds all great until you say it to your employees. <laughs> yeah. And they don't appreciate it so much. Yeah. But they wow. should be doing what they're getting paid to do. You shouldn't incentivize somebody to do the job that they, you hired them to do in the first place. And it sounds to me like this woman um, isn't the manager. She's just the bartender on duty that has an issue with this. Why don't you bring it up to your superior then? Um, if you're not comfortable superior. being the person to speak up and be like, hey, this isn't getting done correctly, talk to your manager and be like, hey, uh, I don't feel like I should have to do every single glass all at the same time at the end of the night when I'm trying to get the fuck out of you. Like, make sure they're busting the tables throughout the the friggin' experience. You know, it's, if they don't want to do it, don't ask us. Get somebody. We else. Gonna, we're not gonna tell your employees to fucking <laughs> bust the tables. Like, oh come on, yeah we would. <laughs> yeah. So pre busting is this at? Yeah, pre busting should be, be to do that. automatically done. Yeah. It, and to even kind of do a you get more flies with honey kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What if you? I don't know exactly how you'd track it, but show them that. They're going to get better tips by keeping the table clean. Yeah, right. You know, make it about them. This seems and like there's something else weird here. Like, why wouldn't you bust? Why, why would that be like a theme? Yeah, why you, you, that, you've never had why that? Is, like, I've no. definitely been to places where I'm Maybe like. Maybe once in a while, but yeah. the whole restaurant? Yeah, right. Exactly. If we're enough where you're getting loaded with glasses like that much, I can see one server being really bad at it. Yeah. But like, or that every, you had to like make an incentive program. Yeah, sounds like that's the culture of the place is not so, to yeah. bust yeah. So tables. Can you please do your job, do your job, do your job? All right. If you do your job, I'll give you more money. Yeah, yeah, that's what I don't understand. Like, yeah. why would you incentive it? Like, I understand like incentives, but that's just like to me that's. Right. I mean, but there are those. You know, if you have call it ten people at a table, and this drives me nuts, and and I'm guilty of it because me and my buddies go out where it's brutal. Everybody orders a drink at a different time, mm. so then oh, I feel like they such don't really a jerk. come over. Yeah, they don't. You know, every time they come, they come over, over, can I get one? Can yeah. I get one? Right, and they come yeah. over. Oh, and we'll take two more of these. And then they just don't have time to do it because they're like, Jesus Christ, I got other tables to wait on. Right. right. Um, so if that's the situation, then... But that wouldn't be every table all the time. No, that's true. You know what, too? I think we're conditioned to think of it as a sit-down. It's because of COVID. We're, we're thinking about it as a restaurant restaurant. If you think before COVID where it was like a club, stand-up, you don't maybe have Like the old school country yet. bars with the, the, the riding the bull in the middle of it? No, well, maybe. But I'm thinking more of like a nightclub atmosphere where there are people standing around, they grab their drink, they're standing, they're dancing. And they, they, and they put the table, yeah. or they put it down anywhere. And this cocktail waitress, the last thing she wants to do is go around and bust when she could be selling more drinks. That's right. what she's making. She's not selling food, she's just selling drinks. That Well, maybe at that point you need a, a bar back. The part of his job is to go around and, right. you know, so Because essentially you're like, right, it's part of the job. You should be picking up all your glasses. But if you want to sell more drinks, you need to kind of give them some help so they can do that. Yeah. Because the bar makes more money that way, too. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just an overall, uh, you know, if you go to a place and there's fucking 90 glasses scattered around, it looks like shit. Right. right. And you're running out of glasses behind the bar. You That's, can't sell more drinks because right. you have nothing but, to I mean, put them in. So, so if it's a nightclub, they might all be... Plastic cups. True. That's right. Yeah. That's which, also true. Which should be easier yeah. Yeah. to bust. Sounds to me from her experience that it's not. And right. I'm just assuming just to give some validity to this email, that this question, like, it's probably a nightclub. Because for there to be that many glasses at the end of the night, um, and it sounds like they're glasses because she has an issue washing them at the end of the night. Yeah. So maybe that's the case. And true, yeah, true. put on a busser or. Yeah. yeah. You know what to do? Put on two more servers, and all of a sudden they can do their job. That's what I always say. Anytime someone asks for a bar back, I was like, no, I'll just put on another bartender. That's, they that's cost half the price per hour yep. and a better service for everybody. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wait, now my tips are cut in half. Shit. Maybe I need to work a little harder. <laughs> okay, this comes from uh, Rain Gilmer. It's two in a row. Rain Gilmer. Yeah, I've been practicing. I had to go through the phone book and just read off names. That's a total, like, actor name. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, I need some suggestions. I work in a pool hall, 10 tables. So you're going to name your kid after like a gloomy day. I know. Vin Diesel and Rain Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Rain says, I need some suggestions. I work in a pool hall, 10 tables, all ABC permits. ABC permits? I don't know. What I don't know that, uh, Alcohol beverage control? Permits? Maybe. For each table? I don't know. Okay. It could be a local thing. And my boss wants to do something special for New Year's. All right, sorry we didn't get back to you sooner. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've been. I mean, it's the St. Patrick's yeah. Day. Yeah, let's yeah, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I don't know what nightclubs and biker slash dive bars. Oh, I've worked mostly 
Sorry, I jumped ahead here. I don't know what to suggest. I've worked mostly at strip clubs, nightclubs, and biker slash dive bars. He sounds like he's interesting. I'm just uh, not sure things in past places would work here. When's a he? Roadhouse. I don't know. Uh, our customers all are all about pool, pool, and more pool. You got any suggestions for New Year? New Year uh, he wants to put a pool in the dining room for New Year's? What? Well, he's got the ABC <laughs> license. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I was reading already and I didn't been listen. clean. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> These tables have been pre right. so, so, Rain works at a pool hall, he used to work at strip clubs, nightclubs, and dive bars, and his boss wants him to do something well, special. It, it, I think it's a, at a pool hall. I don't know. What would you name your kid Rain if it was a boy? I Rain? don't know. Ask Rain Wilson. What the hell does that mean? Rain Wilson, the actor, plays Dwight Schrute. Is that Flip Wilson? No. Oh, his name's Rain? Rain Wilson, yeah. Uh, with an E? I don't know. I don't know. What's, that, a, what's that guy spell it with an E? Karate guy named Rain, too. Well, this like, one spell it with an like E. Like plain. R-A-Y-N-E. And Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's kid's name's Rain? No, not his kid, but there's like another guy that's like the new Jackie Rain Chan. Rain Chan? Rain, 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 I'm really sorry. Like, I know you asked a question, but, you know, <laughs> you've heard the show. You're going to miss it. <laughs> Um, all right, so it's a pool hall. They want to do something for New Year's. But he's used to strippers and bikies. So bring some strippers and bikies into the To play the pool. pool. <laughs> I, I feel like bikers I, would want to, I feel like that's, I don't know, I feel like that would I mean, be, do you think it's that pool would match? or yeah. is it billiards? I'm imagining it's that, billiards, yeah. So bring in some strippers and, maybe not the bikers, but no offense, bikers. But you don't really bring a lot of fun to the table here. Bring, nah, strippers ain't going to work. That's the wrong polls, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one's a pole, one's a cue. You can have chicks dancing on the pool tables. Yeah, but not if like, you had real hardcore pool people because then they're not going to be looking at the girl and be like, they're fucking up the table. I came here to play pool on New Year's Eve. Yeah. So maybe you're a pool hall on New Year's Eve. Who's I don't know. hiding the cue ball? <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing, man. So anyway, yeah. Gives a new, uh, um, yeah. Have a pool tournament. Next. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, tournament. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. yeah, seems to make a lot of sense right there. Why don't you okay. just say that at the yeah. beginning so we make Never like because well, I thought Rain was a girl. I didn't want to get insulted. Five you minutes. Were all hung up on the name, but that all was right. a great response. There's no name for this one. So had an argument with a cocky a bartender. Liar. How do you make your cosmos? Apparently, Cape Cods are the norm here, and I ain't having it. Our co- cosmos and Cape Cods aren't the same thing. Right? There's two similar ingredients. But yeah. So I don't understand. Okay, Cosmo. What's in a Cosmo? Like, I feel like this is a, just a... Vodka, triple sec, cranberry, garnish with a lime. Yeah, so... On the rocks. But if you want, a Cape, if you want a Cape Cod, make a Cape, a Cape Cod. Cod up? You can get a martini glass. That's what you serve a... Oh, a Cape Cod. No, no, I was saying a Cosmo. Yeah, a Cosmo is a martini, is a martini yeah, glass. Correct. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like... This sounds like someone's ordering Cape Cods and the person's like, you should be having a Cosmo. Ugh. Or he's getting a Cosmo, and they're just making. He thinks it's a Cape Cod in a. Well, he says apparently Cape Cods are the norm here, and I ain't having it. Like, yeah, so he wants a Cosmo. So wants don't. A Cosmo. So don't order a fucking Cape Cod. Yeah, what the, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's two completely different drinks. Yeah, like, you have a lot of people who order Cape Cods, and they're hoping they get a Cosmo. I think the point is he's ordering one drink and getting the other one in a different glass. Oh, oh, like they put too much I, fucking juice. I don't in know. It? So it says. So I had an argument with a cocky bartender. How do you make your Cosmos? Apparently, Cape Cods are the norm here, and I ain't having it. Like, it just sounds that like... That bartender doesn't know what they're doing. It, it sounds like there's some yeah. re- semantic confusion here. Look up the recipe for both and get your shit straight. Bingo. I mean, that's... Look okay. at Andy's the salty one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just seems like a yo. stupid question. It's a really like, stupid question. You know, we do I, I, it, sa- it sounds like he ordered a Cosmo and got a Cape Cod. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Right. Yeah. And then the bartender didn't want to admit he or she was yeah. wrong, so well, maybe they stuck put to their guns. Way too much cranberry juice in it, and it was a friggin'. Well, that's what I was about to say was you got a lot of these assholes. Well, I miss these assholes not right now because we can't have people drinking at the bar, but that would be like, can I get a vodka cranberry just with like a splash of cran? Because they want a strong drink. You know well, what I mean? Well, now apparently people are asking for, uh, instead of a, a vodka cranberry, they're asking for a cranberry vodka. So the bartender's like, so you want a shot of cranberry vodka? They're like, no, I want to drink cranberry vodka. So you want vodka and cranberry because there's cranberry vodkas. Right. Right. Uh, cranberry flavored vodka. Right. You and get then that there's vodka and cranberry. You almost yeah, fucked up. The, I just made a these young with, kids. Yeah, these yeah, youngins. This, yeah, these fucking 40-year-olds. Mm. All right. 
Another <laughs> another another one with. Uh, All right. Glad we didn't get that person's name because when they send us hate mail, we won't know who it is. It's probably like Stormy Weathers or something. Uh, this one's from Stormy Weathers. How many bartenders think it's important to at least acknowledge a patron, even if your balls are to the wall? If they don't, get a job somewhere else. Yeah, I feel like why wouldn't you? It, everybody knows when the bartender's busy. Everybody yeah. knows. You can see them. But if you don't need at least acknowledge them. Now, I'm going to say this uh, in a way that, let's say it's normal business. Yeah. Um, if you don't at least acknowledge them and say, hey, guys, have a seat. I'll be right with you. Yeah. That's all you got to say. Yeah. That's or, all you got to say. Or, or and, pick and, a table anywhere. Now, you if know, they're on just... their phone in the back behind the bar, then, yeah, I'm going to shoot them. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if they're busy making drinks... I know as a customer that, you know, the guy's not doing nothing and making me wait. He's yeah. busy, and he already said. Now, if he didn't say anything to me, and he's, then I'm like, okay, guys, at yeah, least say. Yeah. Now, that's one thing to say. If the bar is three deep, and you get some nitwit snapping his fingers trying to get his attention. Oh, yeah, that guy doesn't. I don't acknowledge yeah, yeah, I wouldn't either. And then you finally get to him, and he's like, uh, hold on. Hey, guys, what are you drinking? And he's <laughs> Next, yeah. Would you? I would think I would just walk away and be like, "We figure it out. I'll come back." Oh, I would love purposely ignoring that guy. Yeah, yeah. Like that was intentional. Like, I want you to leave. Um, But yeah, that's what we say at every. So again, depending on how it is, but if it's business as usual, it's just a busy night. But if it's a packed night and you know some guy snapping at him, then Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm okay not acknowledging him. Yeah, it's the only instance I think. All right. So yeah, that was a real answer. Say hi to people. It was. I feel like we answered the question. I feel like it's. You know, an obvious one, but I am salty today. Why is that? You are very salty today. You okay? I don't know, man. Keep going, man. Right. Keep drinking. Yeah. All right. I think I need a hug. Fish? Can I get a hug? <laughs> 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 Molly, Molly McAt- McAnally? Molly McMcAnally? Mac- McMcAnally. I think it's Irish. Uh, why do you? Probably. Why do a lot of What's bartenders... Mac or Mick? Uh, MC. Mac was Scottish. And Could Mick was Irish. Ooh, I don't know that. Oh, I don't think that's 100%. I don't know. Now I'm trying to remember. Is, is the Big Mac Irish? No, that's no, Scottish, it's a, Scottish, right? right? The, you mean like the hamburger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's American, dude. Like, no. All right, anyways. It's German. Uh, why do a lot of bartenders think they are superior to servers? Is that common? Yes. 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 Uh, I'll is, take that one. It, okay. Because most of my, all right, so at Speedwell, they, I would, superior is a strong word, but they are, the bartender is the manager on duty. So we, usually everybody that works the bar, they have more responsibility. Um, they've been with me for a while. We've trained them up from servers to bartenders because um, I'd rather do that than hire a bartender so, that has habits from another restaurant. So I'd rather build them myself. All employees can serve right. that, that work in the front of the house, but not... All bartenders can serve, not all servers can bartend. Correct. Yeah. I agree. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And, and there's a responsibility that comes with tending bars, but what not if just you mixing have, drinks. But what if you have a manager? So you just have bartenders, you have servers, then you have a manager at night. Are they still going to be cocky? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, because you earned your way to get to that point. Yeah, they're just cocky people. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think it's kind of like a little, um, you know, like military ranks almost? Like, because if, you, yeah. if your place has a hostess, Usually you start off as a hostess, work your way to server, work your way up to bartender. Well, bingo. So well, and the like, bartenders are like, I don't need the servers, but the servers need me. Right. Yeah. Right. Which, right. I, I don't know if that's 100 I'm not going to say that's 100% true because, you, you know, someone's going to run your food if you're in the bar. Yeah, they'll be the food runner. No. Well, I don't have food runners, but yeah. they, everyone runs their own food. But, um, but, yeah, there is a little degree to that. I think there's a respect that comes to the responsibility of being – the bartender, at least at Speedwell, because they are also expected to, you know, they answer the phone, they make the decisions. I don't have hostesses, I don't have food runners, I don't have bussers, I don't have barbacks. It's bartender, server, kitchen. That's it. No dishwashers. And there's never a manager on duty because I'm lazy. So they, essentially, the bartender is the one I trust the most. If I can trust them to control the amount of alcohol going out of the bar, I can trust them to make a business decision, too. So as long as they're not dicks about it, you know. So... It's okay that they feel a little superior, but can they go too far? Wow. Yes. But that's just a... That's a whole other... That's right. <clears throat> yeah. But yes, they can. Yeah. They that's sure a personality can. trait. Yeah. Right. And usually the person that has that kind of personality trait won't make it to that position at Speedwell. And if they do, or if they, get, if they change because they end up on the bar and they get a little too cocky, then the either s- humble them... The service will beat the hell out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hate that inner riff stuff. Oh, God. 
nothing worse than workplace drama. All right. Uh, just Jess Littrell. Uh, first day bartending by myself. I hope this wasn't a new year, pre new year's question. Uh, <laughs> any advice? Wish me luck. No. <laughs> what, was the, what was the question? It's a first, first day, day bartending, bartending alone. Bar- yeah. Bartending alone. Yeah. Just be yourself, man. Uh, there's there you're bartending. It's not the end of the world. So if you right. screw up a drink or if you fall into the weeds, it's going to end and eventually. Don't be afraid to look up a drink. Yeah. You don't, have you don't to know, know how to make it. And a lot of times you can ask the customer, hey, can you make me a screaming zombie? You can say, you know what? I've never made one before. What's in it? Yeah. And the customer would be like, oh, well, it's this and this and this. So yep. you get some banter back and forth. And if the customer says, I don't know, just look it up. Yeah. Right. You're always on your phone anyway. Right. And it, I, I mean, you can be like, oh, well, let's learn together. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah, and, just, and then you go over and say, how did it come out? Yeah. Right. Uh, you know. And you can crack a joke saying, like, you're as good as a bartender to me. Whatever. Like, there's this um, cachet that comes, and this is a great follow-up to the last question. Like, this is a cachet that comes with being a bartender that you have to instantly know everything your first day on the job. Like, it comes with this, like, clout. Like, oh, it's a bartender. Like, they know how to make everything. That's not the case. Like, everyone started somewhere. Everyone had a first day, like, with anything else. Like, relax. You got this. You're going to know you're going to fuck up. Yeah. I go over speed all the time and just yell stupid names to see if they'll make me a drink. (laughs) It's always a rum runner. Every single time. I usually end up getting a Guinness. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) There it is. My bit of my little bit of advice: uh, acknowledge people when they come in because we already covered that. Acknowledge people when they come in. Acknowledge people when they come in, and just be nice. Correct. All right, that was an easy one. We're blowing through these today. I'm like helping shitloads of people. <laughs> Good thing we're backlogged. To the <laughs> <laughs> uh, this person's asking about Thanksgiving. Uh, Heather uh, Lasalle. <laughs> That was a joke. Oh, that really. was good. I uh, believed you, though. <laughs> does anyone else use the phrase pocket check? At my current restaurant, no one knows what it is. I do, but that's because they stare at me when I do it. <laughs> Are Jesus we talking Christ. about something else? I have no idea. I don't Just know. Going back to the pocket pool one? Like we're going oh, back yeah. pocket pool? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> going back to that. I don't earlier. know what that means. I've never heard that. That's oh. a great thing for New Year's Eve at a pool hall. Do pocket pool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you really a know pocket what a, checks? <laughs> do you know what a pocket check is? Is that when you pat somebody down when they walk through the door? I don't pat anybody down, usually, unless they're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, then you. Do, do, I I don't even know what that is. That, I mean, it's it's a woman that has been impregnated. No pocket check. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you might want to read that question again. I got confused. Does anyone else use the phrase pocket check? <laughs> Um, At my current restaurant, no one knows what it is. I've all right. never heard of it. Well, we have a phrase. coat check. Is that you got to just check your pockets? I think it has something to do with... Kind of like frisking people? Is that... I, originally, when I heard that, but no, it sounds to me like... like I, I can like, read. Fish is looking over my shoulder. My shoulder. <laughs> my shoulder. Like, uh... Does that have anything like to I do... Like a misread pocket check. You know when you got, like, the checkbook that you drop at the table? Or they, or some people just call that a pocket check? I don't know. I'm going to Google it. Can I Google it? Yeah, Google it. Right, okay. Google I'm Google. curious. I don't know. Because, I mean, either it would have been cool if, like, you included what, what the fuck pocket check was. Yeah, right. Well, maybe are, everybody else knows but us. Well, it, she says, at my current restaurant, no one knows what it is. Where is she from? It, that's not included in Probably the, the Midwest. All right, so the pocket check that, according to this, is not applicable, but we all do the phone wallet keys now mask thing. So yeah. they're calling that a pocket check, like, make sure you got everything you need. That makes sense. So maybe that's sort of like a pre-shift, like, make sure you got everything. You got my bank, I got my book, I got my apron, I got... Oh, know, maybe. Maybe that's a pocket check. Let me look it up. I'll do a pocket check restaurant. Yeah, it's the check presenter. Just that little... The little thing, thing that you... Yeah, yeah a little folder. Yeah. I still don't think that's right. I've never even knew that. So you call it a pocket check. You can call it whatever you want. Check, check presenter. presenter. You call it, it sounds to me like it's pocket, a check presenter. Checkbook, the tab. I don't even know. Yeah, so semantics. Oh. Yeah. Um, Figure it out. Show them and say this is what it is. You know, or just get on board with the rest of the restaurant. Right. And call it what they call right. it. Because why add confusion? Okay. I like it. Next. Uh... So okay. The answer was no. No one's heard of. Yeah. Answer. Yeah. No. Okay. No one's. Yeah. I just want to make sure we answered it. All right. Uh, <laughs> so this one's anonymous. Uh, anyone ever break code and very kindly snap on a regular? Oh yeah. Oh my god, it's my favorite thing to do. No, it's not breaking code. This is, is actually a really good question for Dan Mahoney, who couldn't make it today because he overslept. He was napping. Yes, yeah. he did, and that would have been a really good question because he was the best at it. He had he worked at a place. We used that to call him the regulars. snapper. He was the snapper, the red snapper. I mean. I'd, 
the BBC where he worked before, I felt like that was part of the charm. Eighty percent regulars. Yeah, eighty percent regulars, and you could just be like, "Stop being a jacket," right. you know. Like it was that kind of no bullshit place where. You know who snaps at regulars better than anybody? Maggie, my bar manager. Yeah, but are, are you snapping at regulars? Or are you doing a little banter back and forth? Yeah. That's no. Different. She'll put them in there. Like sometimes I listen. Speedball runs on regulars. It's but the let's just say, let's just say this, the customer is a regular customer ordering their everyday thing, and the bartender has a bad day and snaps at them. That's different. So, That's so uncalled for. Uncalled correct. for. Correct. I was going to say sometimes you have regulars that overreach. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we all have regulars that overreach, but and not, they think they're par, or they say something inappropriate. They think they get a little too comfortable. But that's for everybody. Yeah, yeah. right. So you snap at one of them, even then, you're like you're not supposed to. You but know what I mean? If the customer, if the customer is snapped at for no reason and it's a regular customer, you're not gonna have a regular customer anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, snapping at a regular that has no reason to have it coming is definitely breaking some kind of code. That's just being a dick. Yeah, you don't do that with anybody. Let alone a regular. But um, but if you have a regular that. You like, you tolerate, they tip well, they're in, they're loyal, they're in all the time. That's great. Um, but sometimes they overstep. You know, they say the wrong thing to a server. They, But there, um, there are times they're when, unreasonable. There are times when you have a regular that's been a regular for years and years, comes in and you go, oh, shit, here comes. Here we go. Here we go. And yeah, not to sound ungrateful. Especially, like, you know, uh, like, here we go. I love all my regulars, but there are definitely a couple where they're like, they be, they regulars at first, and you're really happy for the loyalty and the and the frequency that they come in, and then all of a sudden they got a little too comfortable. They say the wrong thing, or they're expecting too much. Yep. And they think they're going to get everything for free, or the end of the, uh, and and then yeah, you you can totally you got to bring that person. Is it worth having that person coming in? Not only like just money wise six days a week, but they're also like disrupting the flow of the place. They're they're upsetting your servers, upsetting your bartenders, like. They're unreasonable. Like, yeah, you got to snap at him. You got to talk to him like an adult, man. They're doing the pocket changes. Pocket checks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Get him the fuck out of there. Like, or, you know, just put him in probation. I've put regulars in probation before. You know, you fucking are an asshole. You're not allowed to come here for a couple months. Sorry. Like, and do you actually track that? Not really. Yeah. But they get the message for the most yeah, part. Yeah, as long as they, if they get the message. Right. Yeah. It's funny, too, because at the end of that two humbled. months, they'll be bit, that first day, they'll be back. They'll be back. So you're not going to lose anybody that way. I've seen places put up, like, names and photos, like, visible to customers yeah, behind the bar. Those like, aren't don't, regulars. Those don't are the, serve, serve this person. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I still think that's really unprofessional. I, mean, I would never do that with put a regular. It, put it somewhere where your bartenders can see, but not where... Well, you're supposed to shame them, so they won't come in. If I was see that picture. They won't. If it's someone in. that stole, or maybe you know what I mean, like punched somebody, or had a uh, we had we had the remember we had the, like that takeout caper for a while for like a year and a half. There was someone like that would call takeout and caper. then yeah, someone like pretend like they got the wrong takeout, and then they'd call all of us and be like, "This is before takeout was nuts with COVID and stuff," but. Yeah. They will like pretend that they ordered from your restaurant and complain about their experience. So you would give them a gift card or something like that. And then it, people started catching wind of it down here, all the restaurants, because we all talk to each other. Yeah. And we're like, don't fuck. This person's doing this to everybody. Huh. Uh, yeah, we talked about it on the podcast, I think, a couple of years ago, like when, right when we were getting first started because it was something. But that's the kind of person you hang a picture of in your bar and say, do not. <laughs> but would you put it where? Would you put it where? Like uh, the guests can see guests it. Guests can see it. Nah, I don't think so. I would love because to. Because then that becomes, to me, that becomes, I, I feel like you're putting yourself in danger. Yeah, it's Because that's a libel thing. Correct. Because do you have proof that it was them? Do you have, you know? Yeah, right. but, you know, at that point, the person that's doing it doesn't care. They just see their sure. picture and say, I got to get out of here. Yeah, 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 picture yeah. On the wall. Fair. But I wouldn't do it. It's not worth it. It's yeah. not worth it. No, but you, you mean some of these other places that you go across the country. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I've seen it all, all types of places, and you're just like, oh, it seems, seems like it's crossing. And that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you, Andy. I don't think you'd, why bother? Is this just like when Fish said I was right a couple times earlier? I agree with then, too. Yeah. I didn't agree yeah. with you then, but I agree with you now. I so, just, I just, you're like having that. a good day, no matter how salty. I you know, are. it's weird. Like, you think you're having a good day. <laughs> it's like Maybe the first we're all time. I'm afraid of you because I'll salt you out, so we're just telling you you're right. Possibly. <laughs> uh, Crystal Fink. That's her name. I don't care what you say. Uh, since we're always, I didn't think it wasn't talking, complaining Jesus. about it. What does everyone tip when they go out to eat? We're we doing the tip question again. Yeah, we get a lot of tip questions. Ugh. If you don't know how to tip, then don't leave. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Servers always tip high. Always. Yeah. If you're in the industry, you always tip more. Mostly. Idea. Yeah. Like, I yeah. would say. Uh, yeah. 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 The one thing. Well, I, what's high? But don't be ridiculous either. Like, I, I think it's getting to the point now where. 
industry people, I, I, I feel this way. I'll, I'll speak for myself. Okay. I feel guilty not over tipping now, but I'm also like kind of like I got a fucking mouth to feed. I'm not making as much money as I used to. So like I want to go to all my friends' restaurants, but I don't want to have to tip 50% every time I'm there too. Like so hopefully that's not expected either because you're in the industry. That right. You, so if the bartender know, really, oh, I only got 20% on that tip. Right. Only 20%. 20% is yeah. rad, dude. Like, right. yeah. I'm happy every time I get I feel 20%. like 20% is the standard. Yeah. 25, you know, is yeah. fine too. If you want to inch it up a little bit to say, hey, you know, like we're in this together. I love you too. You're a restaurant person. But like when, you know, everyone's got mouths to feed, you know? Exactly. Yeah. We all got mouths to feed. Just uh, keep that in mind. The, the, the thing that I find is, you know, we have so many friends in the industry. You're like, oh, I'm going to go for lunch and be like, well, I went here last time. And you do that. And it's been a while since I haven't been down to see Carl yep. or, or, you know, wherever. So like, I start to like n- not think about what I want to eat, but who I haven't like frequented. We're more empathetic to like business owners in our neighborhood than our own family. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> I don't call my grandfather every yeah. week, but I got to make sure that Carl's getting a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my kids will be like, I'm hungry. I'll be like, shut up. This is where we're going. <laughs> uh, Cody Anderson. Does anybody else dream of serving too? I'm even working in my sleep. Do you have work dreams? All day. All the time. All day. Well, I yeah, sleep. I'm sleepwalking. No. Has it gotten you know how can I mean? you have how can you have <laughs> how can you dream about your business all day when you're because I'm half asleep all when you're drinking work, and then I'm half asleep when he I'm can't in bed. Tell when he's awake. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. It's a big fucking Yeah, that's cycle. as a business owner, that's all you do. Yeah. We with me and Carl were talking about the other day. Yep. Like you wake up at three in, in the morning and you feel like you've just got off work still because all you were thinking about while you were sleeping was work. And then you can't go back yeah. to sleep because you can't shut you your brain off. Yeah. No, and your heart's pounding, your blood pressure is always high. At you know, three all you're in the thinking, morning, am I like, going to make payroll? Am I going to yeah. be able to pay the vendors? Am yeah. I going to be able to do this? How much should I come coming in this day? Okay, that's going to cover this bill. So I assume I'm going to talk to landlord again. I yeah. assume it's gotten CBA's worse this year. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. again? Dreaming more this year than different kinds. So I think I'm having more, um, personally, I'm having more of waking up in the middle of the night worrying about stuff more than I used to because yeah. it's so unpredictable. Like, I don't know what the next like, right. rollback's going to be, whatever. Um, where before, it was more just general restaurant stress, like yeah, being, the in the weed, <laughs> being in the weeds <laughs> yeah, in my yeah. sleep, the printer in the kitchen never stopping, having nothing that I need. Now I don't really have so much of those dreams anymore. I kind of miss them yeah, because <laughs> that was when we were able to be full bore. Now it's more sleeping stressed going to bed stressed not really fully falling asleep and then waking up and not being able to go back to sleep because i'm stressed out so that's kind of where i'm at all right so yes yes is the answer yes <laughs> it's very common i think no matter what line of work you're in you have the things that are prominent in your mind you think about even when you're sleeping all right y- y'all ever go out to eat and someone's kid is running around the dining room and by your table and you're just so tempted to stick out your foot <laughs> Yes, very much so. This is perfect for Andy and Carl because you guys. I, I can I can literally. Okay, so I'm gonna tell a story. Uh, friend of the show, Kenny Sem- Semke. Semkin. Sem- Sem- Semkin. Uh, Not that we're mentioning names, but go ahead. No, um, me and him have had multiple heated debates on whether kids belong at breweries. He's the owner, second win, good guy. He is very. It's okay. Huh? Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> he's been on the show. I was friend honest. of the show. Um. He is very pro kids belong at breweries. This is a family environment, and I'm and I am on the exact opposite side. Where no, this is there's nothing here for them. They don't belong here. And I think it was like a parade day, and it was it was just the place was wall to wall, and these kids were running in circles and hiding in porta potties. And he came over and he's like, "All right, you might be right." Second time, someone said I was right, fish. Uh, I already know what the episode is going to be. But my my response to him was might 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 be be right. right. My my response to him was like, "Hey man, I can just stick my foot out and take one of them out." (laughs) Get the fuck out of here! Did you really say that? I literally said that. That's awesome. Um, I I I actually, yeah, I'm with you. The the kids don't belong there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, it's a drinking place. Call it a bar. Call it a brewery. It's really a bar that they make the beer at the place. Yes. Uh, There's 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 nothing for them. Nope. So I went to one, a local brewery, and it was a good-sized brewery, and uh, me and the wife were checking it out. Kids were running around everywhere. I mean, we, my wife thinks different than I do. I think these kids are stressing me out because they're fucking running everywhere, and I, I just wanted to calm down and have a drink. Yeah. And my wife's like, okay, so these kids are running around. 
mom and dad are at the bar drinking. Who's, who's driving them home? Who's driving them yep. home? So the bar, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, the brewery, um, I since went during COVID, give them some support, and they had changed it to 21 plus, and they used COVID as Their a rational. reason or excuse or whatever to say it's only going to be 21 plus. Which makes sense if you have a limited head count that you can have. Right. Why would you have someone That's in there correct. who can't drink? So, right. so now sense. they don't have no kids. It's 21 plus all yep. the time. And I asked the server, and I said, well, how is that going over for you? She goes, well, I love it. Yeah. She says, um, we haven't gotten any complaints, and the people that are our regulars still come and love it, and they'll come more often mm -hmm. because there's not kids running around. And the people that did complain saying, well, we want to come with our kids. We say, well, I'm sorry, it's an alcoholic, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it, it, they just go somewhere else. Yeah. So they're just looking for their kids to go run around while they have a drink. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, they're looking for, you know, a McDonald's that sells beer. Right. And, and so, like, the number of times I'd had heated debates with numerous people about this, um, they're like, oh, you know, it's a family environment, blah, blah, blah. We shouldn't be afraid to, to you know, let kids know about alcohol. It's kind of like their their oh, argument. I hate that argument. And uh, I'm like, there's a time and place for everything. Would you be okay with a 50-year-old guy crushing beers at Chuck E. Cheese? And they're like, well, no. I'm like, yeah, because every place, everything has a time and place. You Stop know? doing that. Just, you're, on, you're on a roll today. That's a great analogy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great analogy. Would you say I was right? Yes. <laughs> and I was about to do that, too. Um, so on previous episodes, this has come up. And when Joel, my, my son's going to be three in a couple days, when he was first... We first started releasing them out into the wild when he was like six, seven months old. We, young, my wife doesn't drink. So we wanted to get out of the house. Not much to do with a six-year-old, mm -hmm. a six-month-old. Figured we can be social. Throw them in the, the carrier. She would wear them or I would wear them, whatever. If I was drinking, I would not wear them. But um, we went to like Devil's Purse for their open house. Yeah. Um, and they had cornhole set up and blah, blah, blah. And there was a family atmosphere. Um, and I think that was the example I was using in a previous book because it was like, I had a designated driver. I was not driving. Yun was not drinking. Um, you know, we just wanted to get out of the house and be social. And, and it was also an industry thing. So we were invited there to go. At the time, I was very like, pound on my chest, like, I don't see the issue. I don't see the issue as long as being responsible. I do see the other side where, but now the more uh, I'm getting into this parenting thing, I agree with you guys. I don't see, there's plenty of other shit to do. Even with your now. Kid, yeah. You don't need to go to a brewery. No. You don't need to be slamming beers with your kids running around, cracking their heads open and shit. Like, I, I just don't see the sense in... You can go to a Chuck E. Cheese yeah. or something, and if you need that beer, you can have a beer at one of those. Like, yeah, you can have, yeah I, they, they have a liquor they license. They'll have yeah. a liquor license. You, know, you can go to, like, you know, we have Pins in town, which is amazing. Yep. We talked a lot about that's, it with that's Alicia. A per, that's a perfect example. That's, so you can that do is a family there. environment where you can have a beer. That is the family. That is not a brewery. It is a place where your kids have something that they can do. They can contribute to that business. And you, if, God forbid, you need to have a couple beers while you're parenting, there you go. Um, but I agree. I was very, I was very supportive, not very supportive, but I saw kind of both sides of it. Now I just don't see the side of bringing your kids to a brewery. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. And, no. and before go, go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. It just if doesn't want, make sense. If you want family time with your family, Spend right. it with your don't family. go to a brewery. Yeah. Right. Right. And if you're stuck and you can't get a babysitter, well, guess what? You're staying at home. Right. Oh, I'm, that's, I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. Right. That's right. You know, just like, that's, that's how it, don't that, I mean? That's you, life. <laughs> don't put, exactly. You, you get, decided to have the kids. little kids. Right. Yeah. Maybe drinking isn't your first priority. Yeah, Maybe right. your family should be first priority. And exactly. before we get letters, everyone here, uh, Jordan, Carl, and myself, all have kids. And I, I'm a weekend dad. Mm -hmm. So I, from almost day one, have been taking my kids out to restaurants because it was easy. They could both get what they wanted. And... Uh, there's no reason why your kids should be running around in a restaurant. No, they yeah, should be no. sitting. And that's okay to bring your kid to a restaurant. Absolutely, they can eat and all that. They sit in their chair. They should be that's sitting, fine. respectful. You slam a couple beers while yeah. you're doing that. I, I have no judgment yeah. there at all. I do it. Um, but letting them run around yeah. and disrupting that business it drives me insane. Basically, uh, dude, we I think I said it on a previous episode too. We had a couple that just straight up let their kids run around while they slammed beers. And my one of my servers talk about 
saying something to your regulars, this was not a regular, but yeah. saying something uncomfortable to your customers was like, hey, listen, I'm not bringing you any more drinks until you get your kids under control or you guys can go. Yeah. And I was like, good for you. Because it, I wasn't there for It's it, fucking but. up everyone's day. Yes. You know? It, and, you know, my kids are super respectful at a restaurant. You know, they know how to sit and behave. And, yep. and, and, you and you're know. right. You do have that other aspect where people come in and say, well, my kids can do whatever they want. Right. Well, no, they can't. Yeah. Uh, here they can't. And I'll, yeah. and I'll say it to them, too, because the servers are very shy about doing it. But they'll come up to me, and I'll just say, hey, guys, the kids have to sit at the table. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be running around 10 minutes later. I'm like, all right, hey, guys, I asked you once already to, you know, put the kids at the table. And I'll say it first time to say, all right, everybody. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you yeah, got yeah, yeah. to keep the kids over there. And I'm like, all right, the kids need to stay at the table. And then the third time, I'll say, here's your bill. See you later. Yeah, yeah right. And yes. that could be that third time could be. Within 10 minutes. It's just right. not worth it. We're in, we're in the hospitality industry. You want to make everybody as comfortable as possible. But if they're, if they're getting chances and they're making everyone else in your restaurant <laughs> uncomfortable, yes, your kids will do that. <laughs> um, then you got to go. Like, go somewhere else. Right. Cook it's, just, it's just not the place for you. Yeah. Have some consideration for the people around you. Correct. Yeah. That perfect way to put it. Right. Have yeah. some consideration. So to answer your question, you put your foot out and trip the little bastard. Yeah, trip that shit. Yeah, so. And then when you do, you'd be like, yeah! If the kid's kid's making a beeline for the bathroom because he's not feeling too good, let him go. Oh, yeah! yeah. Jesus, don't prep him. What are you doing? I mean, I don't think that was the the, the intent behind the question. All right, now now let's let's stay with that. Okay. Because there's other things that I think is cute for little kids to do. And, you know, sometimes I'll go over to the table and I'll say, hey, can I get everybody a drink? And you have the parents that say, oh, yeah, I'll have a beer or a soda or whatever. Yeah. And they'll let the kids talk for themselves, which I'm okay with. Mm-hmm. Until they're like, uh, and they're so shy that they don't want to answer. I'm like, all right, mom, what should I? Bring? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I can't. But I, I don't mind the kids saying, okay, can I have, you know, a soda? Oh, you know, what do you have? I have Sprite. I have Coke. I have, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's so I, I do like that where the, they are kind of teaching their kids to be, you know, decent. I mean, this is how it, it works does, in a yeah. restaurant. But, you know, and, and I'm okay with them getting them up and, and walking. There's another thing, too. Don't let your kid go to the bathroom by himself. Yeah, yeah right. If the kid's four years old, take him to the bathroom. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, and going to the, the single dad thing, that can be real tough. Yes. When you have a daughter. And I have no problems with the ambidextrous bathrooms and somebody goes and takes their boy into the ladies' room or the girl into the boys' yeah, room. Yeah, give me a break. Nobody cares. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, as long as you're going with them. It, it's, it's very, I'm not going to lie, it's very challenging having a daughter because sometimes when your son's like, I have to go, you're like, cool, we're all going to the bathroom because you yeah, can't just right. leave her out in a store right. somewhere. You know? That's a really good point. And then right. she's like walking by the urinals being like, what are those? Be like, don't yeah. just, you know, Stop whatever. sitting there. <laughs> is there anyone, if there is anyone that genuinely like goes in a public bathroom and sees like a dad with his daughter and son in that same, in the men's room or something and has a problem with it, then you should. I don't think, right, I don't think I've, I've, I've never house. gotten grief, but it's, it's just, it's a little added stress. You do, because you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Because like you want her to feel comfortable. So like if she has to go, like I'll walk. No, I mean, she's fucking 17 now. She now can go, I know. She it's can so go funny. on her own. It's so funny thinking about her because <laughs> yeah. I met her. And, yeah. yeah thinking but about like her now. back in the day, like I would walk her to the ladies room yep. and be like, okay, go do your thing. Right. And then you stand outside the ladies room like a fucking creep being like, my do- my, I'm just waiting for my daughter. Yeah, right, no, I'm right. Just right, waiting right. for my daughter. Yeah, right. And like the door opens and it's been a while and you want to check, but like it's it's fucking weird. See, that's just that's yeah. just dad shit. That's yeah. just like parent shit. Like you know, but you're not right. bringing your kid well, to a brewery kid, and saying you, know, you okay give the for check to a little kid and, and you say, "Go give it to us." You know the oh, yeah, that's, that's great. That's and they come up walking yeah. around. And, yeah. You know, that, yeah, yeah, that's okay. But don't <laughs> let your kid run around because you're you're a shitty parent. Mm-hmm. The, the the one thing that I struggled with was my kids didn't understand the idea of if it was made improperly or not how they liked it, they didn't know what to do. Yeah. So they'd be like, you know, they'd take like two bites of a burger and be like, I don't, I'm not hungry. And then five minutes later, would be like, I'm starving. And be like, you just had a hamburger yeah, in front right. of you. And it was, it took me a while to realize, I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it was too charred on the outside. And yeah. you know, my kids are picky eaters. Um, All kids are picky eaters. Yeah. I'm figuring that not shit my out. kids. No, your kids ate everything? Yeah. My kids would eat shit off a sore leg. Get that out of here. Oh, my God. Shit off a sore leg. <laughs> but you'd never I heard like a pocket expression. check. 
All right. I, I think we sort of answered that question. Uh, yeah, so the answer is no. Next. Trip him. Uh, Shelly Lewis. I manage a diner. I'm trying to create more catering business and thought about bringing uh, offices, cornbread or cut up chicken strips to go menus. I need some help thinking of different offices, offices that may want to uh, cater an office party like dental offices, et cetera. Um, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, you have to kind of plant the seed, right? You just, you just got to remember that if it does grow in even just a little bit, that all these people want food the same time you are busy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody orders a party at 3.30 in the afternoon when you get that lull. Yeah. It's either at night. It's the same thing with to-go. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to do to-go to supplement your slow times because nobody wants to go during a slow time. Nope. Yep. So all of a sudden, your lunch, if you get a lunch rush, and you get three orders that you're going to cater, it's a lot of work because you're not going to know that. Until... You might yeah. know the catering, but you're not going to know that you're going to have a busy lunch because, right. you know, you Correct. just never know. Um, so it, it only adds volume to the times that you're already have volume. That's a fantastic yeah. point. Um, the other things I'm going to suggest are uh, industrial parks. Yes. And yep. like big box retail. And don't do them day of. Like you got to book them out because yep. like Carl said... Everyone's gonna want it all at the same time. That's right. Yep. You know, they're all gonna. Fridays are very popular. Big, Friday actually, lunches. Big big box retail is pretty good because when I worked for Home Depot, uh, we actually had like uh, a fund that we were, like once a month. I think I got lunch for my team, and um, yeah. So it was you you know like midweek. A lot of times we would do it, or like if we had a busy project, we would do it the following day. You know, swing by, make it for the right. department, you know, and, whatever and the thing is, make it for the department heads and, and the manager. And there's, there's a lot of things that you right. can do. You can either drop it and run or is somebody staying behind to serve all this food. Yeah. Um, right. right. That's two completely different things. And you also right. have to remember that lunch hours are a set hour. If, mm-hmm. if somebody wants it at 12 and you get there at 1230, their lunch hour is half over. That's yeah, very true. Up. You got to be. So you yeah, got to. Yeah. 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 It, so that it, it's great if you want to increase your business like that, but you got to realize that it's not just going to be a bigger day. It's going to be a bigger day in the Are you saying owning a business going. is like work? Yeah. <laughs> Did I say that earlier? What the hell was I talking about? I said that earlier. Yeah. Owning yeah. A, yeah, we were saying, yeah, we were complaining because yeah. we were busy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a business in town, to use an example, it's a, it's, a, it's a franchise, but I think they got, they did a good job and they did it right. They opened up uh, a little over a year ago um, and they're getting pretty popular. Now, sub shop. And they had a girl that they hired to be sort of their ambassador. Before they opened, they went around to every restaurant, all the places in industrial park, and they were just dropping cards off for free subs. And they were like, hey, listen, we understand. This is a very small business-oriented community, a lot of independently owned restaurants. We understand that we're a franchise, but we want to let you know that we are part of this and, and sort of that. And I think that really helped them out because from what I understand, like I know breweries that order from them. They don't think of it as ordering not from a small business because right. we're also incestuous down here. They do it in a way where they're like, no, these people were solid. They came in, they bought a franchise, they do it the right way. They before they were open, they introduced themselves and they planted that seed like she's thinking of right, doing right. with the cornbread. And I think that franchise gets that whole perspective of how people look at that franchise and as uh, opposed to how they look at maybe other ones that kind of just seem like they're commercial and pop, you know, in it for themselves, take the money and run. Um I think that's a great way to do it. Yeah. And, and I think for small businesses, that'll help out even more. But like Carl said, know your volume and, and just make sure you know what you're signing up for too. And, and I, I tell you, when I, when I was, uh, when I had that position, we would get like, you know, corporate walks and whatever. And I impressed the shit out of them because it became like a standard where, uh, you know, the, the, the corporate walk would happen and it was always like, a, you know, the chain grocery store. So you'd always have the same deli platter at every corporate walk. You figure this corporate guy's doing these like three times a week. So he's right. got the same deli platter for lunch. And I would be like, oh, you know, we got, you know, buffalo chicken wings from here and this from there and like all local stuff. And they'd be like, this is the best lunch I've had in a long time. Right. Like, yeah, because I went local. Yep. You know. Yeah, so. so that's cool too. So I, that she'll have a benefit from that as well. I like the cornbread idea. Little, put a little something that doesn't cost a lot of money. Yeah, now, now I want cornbread. Not and I like that. cornbread Maxwell. Welcome, Dan. Dan Mahoney. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Your mic's off. Is this last call? We're close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, we'll do one more question since Dan's here. One more hey. question since Dan's here. Uh, let's see. Tahir Jackson. I got all the fucking names right today, Dan. I'm no, you impressed. skipped a couple. That's, That's why. They didn't have names. Lies. It's probably lies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull the tape and we'll find uh, out. When the phone rings <laughs> and you're the only one near it, but you just got double sat and are currently getting drinks for your first table, what do you do? We've done this one before. Let it ring. Yeah, let it ring. Let it ring. <laughs> Let it ring. They, They'll uh, call back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, phone's secondary. Yeah, um, I'm going to fucking rip my phone out of the wall. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't hey, know. Hey, if I'm I think the, we need to save my rant for the next episode because I don't have enough time today. in this. <laughs> We're going to have a really positive yeah, episode yeah. Oh, on the next one. i got to go then. Actually, this one's been okay, too. Andy's been the saltiest <laughs> yeah. person on this fucking episode. Mm. Uh, yeah, let it ring. Take care of the people that uh, got, got off That's their right. ass and, and sat in your restaurant and are already sitting there physically seeing you. Um, the people that are calling are going to get frustrated, and they're just, they are valuable as well, especially now. But um, they can just call back. It's as easy as pushing a button, and you'll get to them when you get to them. If, if, if it's that big of a deal, like where you're getting pressured by your manager or whatever to answer the phone, just say, hey, I'll be right with you, and then leave the phone down. I, I, I honestly don't. I phone second. If you're getting pressure from your manager to answer the phone, the manager should be answering the phone. Yeah. Because if, if you're that busy, then take Great care point. of the people in front of you. Great point. Because let's face it, it's probably fucking Quinn calling about the federal student loan I don't have. <laughs> Fuck you, Quinn. I am, coming. I am coming for you, Quinn. That's <laughs> a great point. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, but I mean, really, it could be someone just being like, hey, are you open? Yeah, right. right. And then you took the time away from your actual customer. Is Jared Chabot there? Uh, we're going to talk about his Google listing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Please don't hang up. I, hang I up love you. Please don't hang up. <laughs> please don't, please, don't ever start a conversation please, with please don't hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get to the don't anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, hear that, please, I hear the like, put. Well, I do. Because yeah, if somebody says please, I'm like, please what? Please what? That's oh, it. You're just waiting for someone to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you guys get the phone calls from Quinn? Nope. Uh, I don't Fuck even Quinn. answer my phone at all I want to find out who that person is well, at least four times in one day. Oof. Do you have student loans? No. <laughs> like, not Maybe four you years. You think he's educated? <laughs> See? That's an excellent he's point. Been right, he's been right this whole episode. I've been right twice today. Look at his fucking Nostradamus now, dude, all of a sudden. He's just like, knows everything. Uh, yeah. All-knowing um, Andy Driscoll. So what do, you, what do you want to invent about? Get it yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, get it out. Well. Um, people are fucking stupid. And I don't know why people are so miserable on Valentine's Day. Just because no one loves you doesn't mean <laughs> that you should take it out on restaurant people. <laughs> like, hey, we tell you a five-hour wait. I'm not fucking lying. It's probably a seven-hour wait, and I'm just undercutting it because, you know, I'm trying to make you feel better about your shitty day that you're apparently having. I love it. And when you call back 45 minutes later, there's still four and a half hours ahead of you. <laughs> and you can call back another 10 minutes, and I'm going to tell you there's five pages of people. I'm not going to tell you how many people. I'm not even going to tell you where you're on the list. There's just five pages, and I just made that number up. So please don't call me and ask. We should always hide Dan in another room. At that point, you just say, we're not taking reservations. Oh, no, we don't. We take walk-ins, but you can't have lines. So people fucking put their name in, and then Mm -hmm. they come back, and they call, and they fucking are stupid, and I hate them all. Nice. So right, well, thanks, I'm glad thanks for joining you're the podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm going home I now. But <laughs> you know what's funny is yesterday was kind of a shitty day. Like I don't know what people like. I I haven't seen people miss wearing masks in months. And there was a few people that came in yesterday where I'm like, "Fucking cover your nose. What is wrong really? with you?" I had one dude come in with no mask. It's because he was trying to. Find I had somebody a- come a- in a- for breakfast and gave me a Valentine's. Hey. Was it Jen? Hey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean, uh, still, I didn't think she'd give you one. Hey. It's one more than I thought I was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't get people to close the door. Oh. It's like three degrees out, and they're leaving the door open, and I'm freezing my ass off, and then so you walk it's over. because you're a jerk to them. You fucking yeah, slam the door. You just had a bad day yesterday, uh, which I, is why I, you came in salty. Salty, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a good day yesterday, but I'm, yeah, I'm a little sore. I'm a little hungover. Yeah. What else is going to happen? I'm not ask. <laughs> All right, last call. Last, last call. call. Uh, this is where we go around. We can plug whatever we want to plug. Uh, we're going to start with Jordan. Oh, shit. Uh, I was looking at a picture of my son. Um, what else is fucking new? Uh, what do I want to plug? Well, we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of COVID. That's pretty mm. fucking wild. By mm-hmm. the time this gets released, we'll be a couple weeks away from that. 
Um, at least the shutdown. The shutdown, yeah. Yeah, really? the shutdown. You're, you're plugging COVID right now? No, I'm not going to plug COVID, but I think it's a good time to kind of <laughs> take out to a look back. Shout out my boy COVID. But, but you know what? <laughs> like this time last year, my not boy this COVID's time. almost a year, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a year ago. Jordan's second son. <laughs> we didn't know we would be here. Yeah, and that's yeah. pretty rad. We survived. You know what I mean? I think by the time you guys start listening to this, we'll be a week or so away from, you know, the initial American shutdown and, uh, you know, all that crazy uncertainty and the scariness, but we're still here. We're still cracking jokes. We're still slamming seltzers. Um, you know, we've learned a lot. I think we've all learned to appreciate what we have a lot more. So think about that. Take that day, not as like a, oh, fuck, we actually been doing this for a fucking year, but think about what you've learned. Think about what you've acquired. Stay positive. Is that okay? Yeah. It, was, it was all right. All right. Yeah, that's pretty, that was pretty positive, Carl. Can I plug something? Andy, you could help me? Sure. All right. I want to plug... Um, that extension code over the wall. I don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> Our oh new God. show that I just saw for the first time today called... Oh, you Day fucker. Day. You fucker. Nice. Day God <laughs> damn it. Oh, call the content king all and, the uh, days. <laughs> so I would, I would fucking it's, stole it's, mine. It's, Why do I go last? It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of laughs. You, you, you got to watch it. It's on... Uh, uh, Napster or something. Uh, yeah. Andy will help me out with that. Where is it on? Uh, it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was perfect timing. I think he just snorted seltzer out his nose. Uh, yeah, day drinking uh, is on YouTube. The first episode, it's vodka drinks. It's got Dan. It's got Jordan. It's got Carl. We got some guests on. It's, it's not perfect. We had some technical issues. Um, who knew batteries ran out? But, Listen, like uh, my segments were perfect. Yeah, you, you guys were the most Because we focused. came in first. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we learned a lot. We're going to do more. It was a lot of fun. My I know, nose I, is burning I, so bad. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but when I showed Carl, he laughed the hardest at himself. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he's, he's so proud. I, <laughs> like, I am funny. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it was more of like, a, okay, I don't look like that much of an idiot. Yeah. There's more relief than it, it was. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was a pleasure to edit because I thought it was really funny. It was a lot of fun to do. Got my, got my nose burning. It made me laugh with that Napster comment. Yeah. <laughs> fucking almost spit all over we're, Dan. Uh, we're planning on the next one. We're planning on the next one. So. Yep. Next one. That was a good plug, Carl, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> He's so salty. Stole my plug. He's so salty. Like, Dan, you don't have right. to plug nothing because you don't have to plug. Today's my episode is going to be Andy Salty plug. and Rex. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so... Dan hates you. That was his. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. We've Dan. only just begun on my hate today. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next episode for the, for the rest of it. Um, all right. So I'm starting a new campaign. Mm. Uh, so, sort of for our friends at uh, Mayflower Brewery. Um, if you haven't already noticed, I comment on all the posts about their new beer. They have a new beer, uh, Fear and Patience. It's delicious. Uh, for a little Plymouth history, uh, there is... That's your other podcast. Yeah, it is, but... I was, gonna, oh, you, I was just about this, to say This that. is a tie-in. It's a plug. He can plug this it. This is a tie-in, yeah. yeah. So check out the <laughs> old colony cast. COVID, for Christ's sake. That's but, true. But uh, <laughs> the Brewster family, uh, Pilgrims, came over, had five kids, Fear, Patience, Love, Wrestling, and Jonathan. So if you see... Any, Jonathan lucked out, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you see... They have a beer called Love and Wrestling. They have a beer called Fear and Patience. So whenever I see the new Fear and Patience, I hashtag, where's Jonathan's beer? So, I saw that. Hashtag any post, where's Jonathan's beer, and let's get Jonathan's the beer he deserves. What kind of beer do you think it should be? I feel like it's, it should be a dark beer because the other ones are like No, IPAs. it's going to be just like the no, lightest the beer are, ever because he's clearly not that exciting. But His he's name's the, Jonathan. <laughs> he's the dark sheep of the family. <laughs> Junk lager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's the dark sheep of the family. You know? An English Kolsch. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. An ESB. Yeah. So uh, where's Jonathan beer? They are making a Kolsch, right? Yeah. So th- that's, that's what I'm I like that. I was wondering what that meant. I was like, who's Jonathan? I don't have a Jonathan. Learn your history, yeah. Speedwell. I know. <laughs> Fuck, dude. For real. He's the coffee. The company. hashtag God, wears Jonathan's out. beer. Yeah. You knew that? New World Tavern? <laughs> I knew it. Did you really? Fear, patience, love, wrestling, and Jonathan. You know yeah. that because of the Mayflower Brewster beers kids. and the one no, we just talked about. It's because I found a document upstairs in this old building. It had listed all their names and stuff. With well, a document. Yeah, one of the ghosts gave it to him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Used it as toilet paper. Was it, was it love that discovered Bridgewater? Or not discovered, established? Yeah, love you guys only know this shit because you have the old colony cast and you have Hannah. No, yeah. everybody yeah. here is You're the only one that does 100%. it. One hundred percent. I'm not from around here. One hundred percent. You're from around here. You're from New Bedford. I'm from Fall River. Same thing. We're all <laughs> uneducated and we don't care. We have a battleship to stare at. It's a cool and battleship. You, do you know what the motto is? Of What's Fall the River? battleship's name? Big Mamie. It's a I cove. I don't feel like that's the real. That's name. not really. That is the name. Wow. And do you know what the? Uh, Shouldn't you get a battleship? Shouldn't it be what the USS Big Mamie? Big Mamie. 
It is. It's Big Mamie. And uh, the, you know what the Fall River motto is? Because every town has a motto. We're Don't happy tread right on, on Big Bedford. Mamie. We got boats. Nope. We'll try. <laughs> I swear. Oh, no. We've talked about this. God, this. look it up. It's on and every police patch. It says, Fall River, the scholarship city. We'll try. The scholarship <laughs> You know why it's a scholarship city? Because it's an oxymoron. Because none of them sure. can get to college by themselves. <laughs> True. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. You want to know what you call a... Good looking girl in Fall River. Oh boy. A uh, tourist. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. I'd worry about our, I'd worry about our Fall just... River listeners, but it's just Jordan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Thanks for yeah. biting my nose. <laughs> so uh, you know, if you want to send us hate mail or death threats, uh, you can send them to Bartok. Definitely get them from Fall River. <laughs> That's why I said that. Send them to uh, New World Tavern. Bartok at uh, Bartokcast at gmail dot com. You can follow us on all the social medias at Bartokcast. Um, yeah, I mean, we're we're gonna have Hannah on soon. I think we're gonna do a yeah. Little, I would love to do that little, little history crossover. That'll be fun. Really calling me on my bullshit. Yeah, someone actually knows history. She's Listen, great. I'm from the North Shore. I don't, this is all foreign to me. All right, good. So you can <laughs> yeah. be the idiot with me. Exactly. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> hey, trust me, Hannah makes us all feel like idiots. All right, perfect. So, uh, <laughs> so check out the old comedy cast. We're gonna throw that plug in there too. Um, but uh, this was Bar Talk Cast. I don't really yeah. Follow us. Email. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, should we say congrats in to, Ibria on your big anniversary, too? Because we haven't recorded since then, right? Nah, let's oh. wait till next issue. Okay, cool. Next issue? Yeah, we'll do okay, the next. Okay, love you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's podcast. You can find us on all social medias at Inebriart or on Instagram at Inebriart6. You can email us at Inebriart at yahoo.com. And make sure you listen to the other podcasts on the Inebriart Podcast Network including Bar Talk, Old Colony Cast, Retro Redoctopus, America's Hometown Horror Podcast, and our newest one, Theme Park Legends, a podcast about working at theme parks. What else? And we'll catch you again next time.